Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be using our natural convection equations in order to find the heat transfer through a pipe. Now we're gonna keep this one pretty simple. We're gonna say that we know exactly what the temperature on the outside of this pipe is. And that temperature is going to be 80 degrees Celsius. We also know that the outside temperature, T infinity, is going to be 20 degrees Celsius. And of course, we're going to be dealing with air. Looking at the geometry of the problem, the diameter of this pipe is going to be 0 0.2 meters. Also, the length of the pipe into the page is going to be 20 meters. So that should be everything we need. Our goal here is to find the heat transfer out of the pipe which we will call Q dot. The starting point with these problems is always to find our film temperature, which is simply the average temperature between the surface and the air surrounding it. For this case, the average temperature between the two values is 50 degrees Celsius. Now, the reason we're doing that is so that we can use this temperature to go find all of our fluid properties. So once we have that, we can go to an air table and find nu, our kinematic viscosity, k, our thermal conductivity, our Prandtl number, and then finally, beta, which is our volume expansion coefficient. From the table, we find that nu is right around 1.8 times 10 to negative five meters squared per second. Our k value is 0 0.0274 watts per meters Kelvin. Our Prandtl number, is going to be 0 0.723, and beta is simply one over the film temperature. Now, just as a word of caution, this equation only works for ideal gases. So as long as air can be treated as an ideal gas, we can go ahead and set beta as one over the film temperature, which for us is one over 323 Kelvin. Make sure that you use Kelvin as your value there, and that comes out to 0 0.0031 times Kelvin to the negative one. So once we have these four values, we're ready to go ahead and start plugging things into equations. The first thing that we should find is the Grassoff number. The Grassoff number is just G times beta times our difference in temperature, which for us is going to be our TS minus T infinity. And we always want this to be positive. So I start with the higher temperature. That's going to be multiplied by our characteristic length. For this particular problem, our characteristic length is our diameter. And that's going to be d cubed. And that's going to be divided by nu squared. So plugging all these values in, gravity, of course, is 9.81. That's meters per second squared. Our beta value, we just said, was 0 0.0031 Kelvin to the negative 1. Our temperature difference is going to be 60, and I'm gonna use Kelvin here, though Celsius is the exact same thing. And then our diameter we said was 0 0.2 meters, and that's cubed. And all of this is divided by our new 1.8 times 10 to the negative five meters squared per second squared. So really quick, just looking at these units, our Kelvins will cancel out, we're gonna end up with meters to the fourth per second squared on the bottom. We're gonna end up with one, two, three, four meters and two seconds on the top. And so these guys will also cancel out. As expected, our Grasshoff number is perfectly unitless. The main reason we do that is to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes, putting things in in the wrong units or something similar. Now that we have all this, we can plug in those values and we get that our Grassoff number is 4.50 times 10 to the seventh. Our next step is to calculate the Rowley number. This one's quite a bit simpler. It's simply the Grassoff number multiplied by the Prandtl number. The Prandtl number is just 0.723. And so our Rowley number here is going to be 3.26 times 10 to the seventh. Now the Nusselt number is quite a bit more complicated. So the equation we have is 0 0.6 
plus 0 0.387, rally number to the 1 sixth, just that piece is going to be divided by 1 plus 0 0.559 over the Prancel number. That piece is going to be to the 9 sixteenths power. And then finally, that entire denominator is going to be to the 8 27th power. Then we can close the entire bracket and everything we just wrote is going to be squared. So that's a lot, but we really only need to plug in our Prancel number and our Rowley number to this equation. And we're gonna end up with 40.3. Now, that being said, there's also a piecewise function that serves the same purpose and is a lot similar. It's less accurate, but it can still do a pretty good job. The piecewise function says that if our Rowley number is less than 100, then our Neusselt number is 1.02 times the Rowley number to the 0 0.148. If our Rowley number is between 100 and 10,000, then our Neusselt number can be approximated as 0 0.85 times the Rowley number to 0 0.188. If our Rowley number is between 10,000 and 10 million, then we use Neusselt number is equal to 0 0.48 times the Rowley number to the 1 fourth. And then finally, if we're between 10 million and 1 trillion, then this becomes 0 0.125 times the Rowley number to the 1 third. So the Neusselt number we want to use is this one at the bottom, which means that our Neusselt number is going to end up being 39.7. So given the choice between using this approximate equation and this much more complicated equation, it's usually easier just to go ahead and use the approximate. Now, if we're really interested in accuracy, this value is considered more accurate. But of course, the difference that we're talking here is 1.5% difference. Now, the last piece here is to find Q dot from the Neusselt number. So first off, we can calculate H just using the formula Neusselt number times thermal conductivity divided by our diameter. Plugging that in, we end up with 5.51 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Finally, we know that Q dot is equal to H times A times delta T. So we'll take a quick diversion to note that our area is simply pi times d times l, since what we're dealing with is really just a cylinder. And so our area here is 12.6 meters squared. We know that delta t is this 60 degrees, and of course we just calculated our h. So all that together means that our q dot for this problem is 4.16 kilowatts. So for most of this, the process is pretty straightforward. We're going to identify our film temperature. We're going to use that value to calculate our fluid properties, calculate our Grassloff number, our Rowling number, and our Neusselt number, all in turn. And then once we have that Neusselt number, that's everything we need to go ahead and calculate H and our Q dot. So that's the process that we're going to be taking for all of these problems. It's really similar to forced convection, except instead of using the Reynolds number before the Neusselt number, we go through this process of Grasshoff and Rowley. So I hope this was helpful as a first step towards solving some of these problems.